the UK Foreign Secretary's visit to the region this week signifies our unwavering commitment to this end. The UK Prime Minister has spoken with Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Abbas and other regional leaders, underscoring the UK's commitment to play its full diplomatic role in securing a ceasefire deal and creating the space for a credible and irreversible pathway towards a two-state solution. The world needs a safe and secure Israel alongside a viable and sovereign Palestinian state. I thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom and I give the floor to the representative of the Republic of Korea. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Chef de Cabinet Vatre for his briefing on behalf of the Secretary General. Uh, for more than nine months, civilians in Palestine and Israel have experienced enormous suffering. This catastrophe must come to an end now. As Resolution 2735 demands, Hamas must accept the deal without further delay or more conditions, and both parties must faithfully implement it. A series of dismaying incidents have been repeatedly occurring, including an Israeli strike on a so-called safe zone in al Mawashi, reportedly killing more than 90 Palestinians. These recent attacks demonstrate once again that nowhere in Gaza is safe. We urge Israel to cease all attacks that lead, that lead to civilian casualties. When civilians are routinely killed and the civilian infrastructure is habitually targeted, Israel is not doing what it describes as everything to protect civilians. As repeatedly stressed by all members of this council, Israel must abide by its obligations under international law, including international humanitarian law. Israel must implement measures to abide by the rules of distinction, precaution, and proportionality. Hospitals, schools, places of worship, and humanitarian facilities must not be targeted under any circumstances. This is even more important as such facilities are being used as shelters of innocent and helpless civilians, many of whom have been forcibly displaced multiple times as a result of Israel's recurrent evacuation orders. At the same time, Hamas must also cease endangering Palestinian and Israeli civilians by using densely populated areas in Gaza as a basis to launch rockets that target Israel. Humanitarian aid must not be hindered as famine spreads. In spite of the operationalization of the UN 2720 mechanism enhancing the man management of humanitarian aid into Gaza, delivery of aid inside the Strip is nearly impossible which is largely attributable to Israel's negligence of ensuring law and order in Gaza. Israel should open all available land crossings and exert every effort to maintain public order in Gaza, as well as protect humanitarian aid workers. We are also deeply alarmed by the ongoing deterioration of the situation in the West Bank, since its adoption in 2016, Resolution 2334 has not been implemented, as Israel has expanded its settlement activities in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. It is particularly alarming that Israel has seized more land in the West Bank so far this year than in the past 20 years combined, which indicates the accelerating trend of settlement expansion. Military operations by Israeli forces in the West Bank, worsening settler violence, and the demolition of Palestinian homes are ever more troublesome as they are executed with near impunity. 
inflammatory rhetoric and actions by Israeli high-level officials are adding fuel to the fire. We strongly urge Israel to stop all settlement activities, respect the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, and hold the perpetrators accountable. Mr. President, the entire Middle East is on the precipice of even more dangerous hostilities. The situation across the Blue Line is of utmost concern, with daily exchanges of fire between Israel and Hezbollah expanding in scope and intensity in total disregard of Resolution 1701. Hezbollah's armed presence in southern Lebanon is an ongoing violation of this resolution, and the traumatic experience of Israel of October 7 may have increased the hardline approach of the IDF across the Blue Line. This, in turn, further worsens the political and economic crisis in Lebanon, where 5 million Lebanese share their small land with around 2 million refugees, including 1.5 million Syrians. Recent worsening public, state, public sentiment in Lebanon due to the large number of Syrian refugees is another concerning factor that exacerbates regional instability. Continuous exchanges of fire across the blue line amid repeated warnings against the full-fledged war between Lebanon and Israel are also threatening the safety of UNIFIL, including the Republic of Korea's peacekeeping personnel. In addition, ongoing attacks against vessels by the Houthis in the Red Sea and repeated attacks between Israel and Syria also elucidate the dangerous escalation in the region. The entire world should exert its utmost efforts to avoid a full-scale regional war. We call for maximum restraint by all parties in the region, both national and non-state actors. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Republic of Korea, and I now give the floor to the representative of Algeria. Mr. President. At the outset, I would like to thank the Russian Federation.